Rebecca Brandt, and today's recipe is a grilled steak and a grilled pork loin, but it's really about the spice rub. This is my favorite spice mix to use on steaks, chicken, fish, everything. It's got a little spice to it, it's got some kick, and it's my all-around favorite recipe. This recipe is sponsored by Smartro Thermometer, and I'm so glad they did because they make this really cool gadget that has two probes. And since I have two big things of meat, I can make sure I don't overcook my steak or undercook my pork. It's the perfect cooking thermometer. In all my life of cooking, this is my favorite rub recipe for meats, beef, chicken, lamb, pork, anything you have, this is the one I go to. We're gonna make a good quantity so you can have it for more than just today's recipe. It can stay in your cupboard for six months. The steak I'm cooking was on sale for $2.99 a pound. It's a choice beef top round steak, commonly called the London broil. This whole steak was only about $8. I'm also doing a really big pork top loin center cut. It's a boneless pork loin and it's half of what's on that pig. This had a price of $2.99 a pound, so this whole pork loin was only $12. If you shop the sales at the grocery stores, you're gonna be able to feed your family for a very good price. One of the favorite things about my cooking show is letting you know that you can buy and feed your family very inexpensively for a beautiful, terrific meal. It's about the cooking techniques. It doesn't have to be about the price you paid for your meat. My favorite spice rub includes a lot of celery salt, garlic salt, kosher salt. This is my salt group here. Then I have my spicy group. That's ground white pepper, cayenne pepper, and black pepper. Now you might know me as I'm not a spice girl, but on this meat recipe, I actually do like a little heat with my meat. Then I have the paprika. It has a subtle flavor to it and a lot of color. So it's beautiful on your white pork or your white chicken. It's nice to have some color. Also, some mustard for tang. It's kind of the secret ingredient because you don't know what's given at the tang. It's the mustard. Let's start with our salts. You need two tablespoons, level tablespoons, of kosher salt right into a bowl and celery salt. Now, if you've never made a rub with celery salt, you're gonna be writing me a comment. I hope that you love this. That is an amazing and that's a key ingredient. And of course we like our garlic, so two tablespoons of garlic salt. Now we're adding our heat. One teaspoon of white ground pepper, one teaspoon of cayenne red pepper, and one teaspoon of normal black pepper, one tablespoon of paprika, and one tablespoon of our dry mustard. Now mix it up. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. That salt is gonna give a little crust to the top of your meat, so you're gonna like that. You could have added some oregano and thyme and some other things, but this is just the simplest recipe. It's so easy to come by, and it's just the best. It is my go-to. And when I make a batch of this, I like to put it in a little bottle or a jar to keep. I'm using a little milk jug today because it's really nice to shake out. And I like it because it's thin, it rises tall, and it's gonna fit nicely in my spice cabinet. So this is the quantity for this recipe, and this is gonna be great for my two steaks. If you wanna make double or triple that, feel free, because it will last, like I said, for six months. And when I'm done with this video, I'm gonna make the rest of my batches to have a full one of these. I didn't wanna overwhelm you with all the quantities of that because you may not have it. This is what you start with. It's all in the same ratio. And I thought I'd just keep going with the recipe until I got a whole bottle of it. And I thought, you know what? I'm not even gonna shake it. I'm just gonna have that whole bottle there. I thought that was really cool. Kinda looks like sand art. So let's take a look at this big piece of meat. I bought this at the grocery store and it has some of these mm, discolorations, but you know, it's okay. That's just what happens. It gets oxidized. It's still good meat though. I'm laying it on a paper towel and I'm gonna Pat the whole thing dry. Give her a flip. Voila. This was a very cheap cut of meat. It hardly has any marbling. So I know it's gonna be a little more tough than I like, but I like the bargain. So I just take a couple of forks and I'm gonna pierce the forks and that's gonna tenderize it. And if you have any pin of energy because you're staying at home because the darn coronavirus has taken over the darn world, this is a really good time of the recipe to take out that aggression. 
Because you're not hurting anything. You're just making your dinner better. So keep going. We're going to get all sides of it. There. Doesn't that look great? All those holes are also going to absorb the spices. Flip it over and do the other side. Flip her over and do the other side. Which is even easier because those holes had already gone through. But I just think this is a very thorough way of tenderizing the meat. And it only takes five minutes. If you have kids, this is the part of the recipe they like the best. My dad was a farmer in Nebraska, and he taught me to do this from a very young kid. One of my best memories was making steak with dad, and this was the part I got to handle in the kitchen as a very young cooking student of my father's techniques. Done, chum. And now we're gonna add our spices, and do a lot of them. This is two big tablespoons about on one side and rub it in. Oh yeah, that's gonna be great. All that flavor on top of the steak. Other side, one, two. And time to rub your meat. That looks great. And get the sides. And I'm gonna put it on a tray, just like that, and that's gonna rest. With all the extras on top. It's sprinkling spice rub today. Oh yeah. And the same goes for the pork. Roll porky out onto paper towels. Oh, oh, messy. Things don't always go right in the kitchen. <laughs> they can make a mess. I hope you still have paper towels in the coronavirus because this recipe sure needs them. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> Clean up on aisle nine. All right. This porky pig is a juicy one. He gets a little extra pat down today with his rub. One, two, all over. Now a pork loin is generally really tender, so I don't need to go through the whole tenderizing technique with my forks. This is fine. I wanna get the sides of this pork because it's pretty round. So add some more spices on every side, from the tip down to the belly, the middle of it all. Well, it's really the back. The loin is the back strip. And a little extra here. Oh, wow, that looks great. Look at all those spices. So I just kinda keep in and start Smushing it so it picks up the stuff on the board too. In to end. Now Porky's gonna take a little nap next to Beefy. 30 minutes is good, but you don't need a timer. I'm gonna turn on my grill while this is setting up. And I might have some other prep to do for dinner. So it's just perfect if you start with your dinner with this so it can rest while you do your other prep. I'm so excited to show you how the Smartro works. I have placed my probes onto each side of it because I have two pieces of meat today. The power switch is in the back. Off is where it's at now. You can have it on a timer setting or cook setting. I'm going to cook because I want it to beep when my meat's done. That tells me it's working. It says the dee dee deet sound. On the other side, there's a centigrade or Fahrenheit. I'm cooking in Fahrenheit today. It also indicates P1 for probe one and P2 for probe two. So I want to do our meat today. So I'm going to go to the probe one. This is P1. I'm going to set that for my pork. So you press the dot that says S slash S or meat, and I'm gonna go to my pork. If I wanted to change that setting and have it to be my own specific, I would have gone and continued onward to the round indicator of settings, let it blink, and then press the temperature, the up control, let's say I wanted higher, or I wanted it lower. That's how I would have done it. Now I'm gonna set my beef. My beef is gonna be on P2, the right side, so I'm gonna press the icon and get to the beef icon. The first one is well done cow, I don't want that. The second one is medium done cow, I don't want that. And the third one is rare cow or fish. And that's an internal temperature of 145. Well, I happen to know I like it a little less than that. So I'm gonna go over here to the settings and lower it to 140, just for fun. I like a really rare piece of meat. There, 140. I'm gonna keep it at that. That's set, it's gonna adjust, it's gonna know if I don't keep playing with it, it's gonna set itself. There it is at 140. The probe is sitting outside, so it's at 86, 85 degrees, because it's a hot day in Santa Barbara, California. But it knows what it wants the meat to be cooked at. My rare beef is at 140, and my pork is gonna reach 144 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the proper temperature to serve pork at. If you want to stand this up next to your grill, it comes with a stand, but I'm placing it right on my grill. That's easiest for me because it has magnets. It's stable on there. Time to put the meat on. 
probe one is going to be for my steak, so I'm sticking it into the very center of the steak. Can you see that? Let me show you. I'm going to the fattest part at a horizontal angle, right in there. And probe two is for my pork. So I'm estimating where the center is. It's about there. And I know my pork is going to take the longest. I want to put it on the top shelf. And my steak is going to take the shortest. I could wait, but I don't want to wait. I'm putting my steak right on right now. Down goes the lid. We see the internal temperature of the pork is at 66 degrees and the internal temperature of the P1 steak is at 59 degrees. We have some time to wait. And I love to use my Smartro in the kitchen because it goes great in an oven. For things like chicken, I'm putting it right into the center in the fattest part of the thigh and I set two chicken right there. And the chicken's done. That looks perfect. Time to take the probe out. And out of the side, it'll stop. Oh yeah, take that probe out. Oh, beautiful. Look at that steak, yummy. The pork is coming along, look at that. It's got those beautiful grill marks. Smart Tro tells me it's only 10 more degrees, almost done. And I'm gonna let this rest. The pork is done, yay. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Okay, okay, I realize. <laughs> Time for the transfer. Oh, beautiful. Take the probe out. Oh, make way for Porky Pig. That looks great. Let's try it. Oh, it's tender and juicy. Look at that. That's beautiful, perfectly cooked. Oh, wow. Look at how moist that is. Delicious. Can you see that? That's delicious. Look at how moist and juicy that is. Yum. And time to cut the pork loin. Oh yeah, that's perfectly done. Smartro cooking thermometer really helped me ace it when it comes to making the meat exactly how I like to eat it. I want to bite with that spice rub right now. Uh. <laughs> mm. That's my favorite. It's always so good. Perfectly seasoned and spicy. The flavor even goes into the meat because it was sitting there for 30 minutes. Let's try the beef now. The top where that spice rub is. Uh. Delicious. Wow. Beef and pork. It's what's for dinner. I hope you all love my spice rub. It's really my favorite. And click the link below to get your Smart Row cooking thermometer. They're great. They come right to your door. I'm Rebecca Brand. Subscribe to my channel. And let's keep making great recipes in life, like delicious recipes for your family and you for life. <laughs> be well, be healthy. Thanks for watching this video. I think I'm going to eat a whole lot of meat right now. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. like this recipe video, check out these recipes over here. They kind of go along with this theme.